Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Rashida Aridi. I'm 59 years old and I was born in Deep River. My grandfather was staying that time in Steenburg. I attended the Methodist Church School in the graveyard in Deep River. And it's four sons, a set of twins, which is in the middle. We are a very small family. Um, I, I'm the eldest with two brothers. Um, my middle brother, um, Muhammad Yusuf, has passed on about seven years ago. Very sad time for us. It's still sad for me when I think about him, I talk about him. So we we only two left now, and it's my mother. My father passed on. My mother stays with me. She's going to be 80 years old, inshallah, next year. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Umaya Ari Meyer. Um, I'm 57 years old. I have three children. And when I married my husband, got three more children. So now uh, we're all in all six. Alhamdulillah. My family is all from District 6 and Buka. Our surname is originally supposed to have been Orion. Well, my great-grandfather was German. So with all the registration of names and surnames, it came to Ori. My late brother, Shafiq, he, he was the, the, the guy that kept contact with family. Um, two brothers and two sisters. My two and then my father remarried and we got another sister and brother. So all in all, we were six siblings. So it was Uchti to them and my sister Stiki Nina. So my, my two brothers, um, they all um, passed on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a high place in Jannah, inshallah. Okay, me and Sumaya has been friends for, I, feel, I would say forever, you know. We might not have seen one another often, but we were always there for one another. Right now, we were at Payfax, I was a manager there, and Sumaya came to work there. And later, she became also a manageress there. Sumaya got married, and then she came to stay with me for a while, and then she went on her own again, and then we, we lost track, but we never lost each other's friendship. That was always there. And you know, that time when we started working, you earned like 29 rand a week, which was like top of the range salary. And when I became a supervisor, I thought, now, I need a great increase, right? And then I got only 30 cents a week increase. That was <laughs> not And when I got married, and my eldest daughter um, was born in a house, she was a tiny baby, I remember. There was no clothes available for pre premature babies. She wasn't premature, but she was very small. And Rashida and I started knitting jerseys, remember? Rashida could knit, eh? And then we knitted jerseys for fancy colours. The Rainbow Senior Citizens Foundation is an organisation um, that came from the time of my time working at ISWA as a social auxiliary worker under the wings of Mrs. Noor Minton. It so happened that this couple came to um, Mrs. Minton and they, they asked her if there is nobody that can assist them, maybe on a weekly basis, just coming there because the seniors is just, they're just um, going down, you know, and, and nobody, they're not active, they're not doing anything. And then she called me in and she said to me, they had good with me, come, 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 come here, come here, come here, she said to me. And I said, what is it now? She said, Listen to what they want. And I fell in love with the people. And immediately, it is almost like I got the hidayah from Allah that this is where you want. I want you to be. Because I always used to ask Allah, put me where you want me to be and let me do the work that you want me to do. I was so happy when I came back to the office. I said, this is what I want to do. How am I going to get my money to sustain this project? I actually approached 10 of my friends. For six months, they must give me 100 rand. And I got 1,000 rand a month to sustain my project. It's because on a Tuesday, um, Safa went in and she did her uh, 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 um, uh, sewing. And maybe on a Thursday, we would do some exercises with the seniors. 
and with whatever they have done with Safia, they would then sell as part of an income for them. I took the seniors on many different excursions. This went on and then I got bigger ideas. Instead of just going to Kirsten Bosch or Kata, going to the beach once a year, because uh, many of them haven't even seen the beach for the, for, for the entire life. Since they How did I went with two buses, which is 120 seniors. I bride for all the people. I took the, the, the volunteers that was with me that time. They would take each person's plate of food to their chalets. And I didn't want the people to come out to come and fetch their food and stand in long queues. I said, no, that's not how we're going to do it. We need to. So some respect for we our seniors. To the, to the crocodile farm. We went to the ostrich farm. And that was for a weekend from the Friday to the Monday. And it was very successful. Everybody enjoyed them. and six I left Iswa but I did not want to leave the project behind because it was so it was I was so passionate about the project I felt even though I'm not under the banner of Iswa I can do it on my own still just do the excursions with the lady from the book cup I met up with her and she also had the group the book cup seniors Durban she wanted to take her seniors to Durban and I said, let's join up. Then we make it a bigger group and we eventually got, we had 30 people with a train. With a train, it was, it was really an experience for us because halfway through, the lines were stolen and the train got stuck. And you know the nice part, when we got to a certain station, the Muslim community was waiting us with breakfast. That was so big because they apparently heard that there's people from Cape Town, seniors from Cape Town, coming, uh, um, coffee and tea and donuts and bread and biscuits, you name it. You know how the Muslim communities are. When they, when they go out, they go all out. They spent the entire day at Ushaka, went to the shopping malls. We, went, we had a Juma eye at the, at the Durban, Durban Road Mosque. We were really entertained. Don't know how they knew about us being there, but they just came and they invited us and we went. What do you think it's on? What should our next trip be? Don't tell me you're going to take us for Umrah. I said, Ya Allah, that is when Allah has put that Hidayah into my heart and into my mind. You have to take these people for Umrah. But now I said, wow, I can't do this on my own. I can't do it alone. I need help. I met up with Sumaya and Fatima and I just, so by the way, mentioned to them so Maya immediately said, Rashida, I'll help you. Fatima also said, yes, I'm with you. By then I already, um, can I say it? I got divorced by then. But my goal was to travel. And I started traveling because Alhamdulillah I had a good job. If I set my mind to, to something, then I would achieve it. I, I would take five jobs here. Being a single mother, I achieved my goals, alhamdulillah. But this particular one year, when my father-in-law called me, I said, 
Hulk sê saam met my makke toe gaan, dit was December, sy sê die is daddy, but I don't have money now, because I just bought me a car, hy sê, moet nie worry nie, kyk wat jy gaan doen, en dan, ek en mama sal jou reed difference geef, en hy leef die, en hy thought, but om die ou mensens die geld te vat, it doesn't sound right to me, I went to work, after the December holidays, in March, by that year, alhamdulillah, I had all my money for Hajj, and my intention is to do my little aksa, I want to go to aksa. Nee, ek kan mama kan nie, aksa toe gaan nie, die, die mense pa klui daar, en, so I said, daddy, if I can't go to my little aksa, then I'm not going with you. That year, when I stood on Arafah, I had my dad with me, I had my brother with me, my in-laws, and I felt like I was the most important person. My siblings came to me and said, they know, like, oh, Hajj, 2006, we are making our Nia to go on Hajj. And I thought to myself, would I know Aileen for the ice play? We are a rainbow community. And all the people that has been with me, I don't ask you what religion you are. I don't ask what race you are. I say, if you want to come with me, you're welcome to join me. We respect each other, and that is what the organization is about. And that is how the organization's name came about, the Rainbow Senior Citizens Foundation. We then launched the organization in 2009, on the 1st of September, I will never forget it, at Barron's. But when one of our senior members that was in the, the, the meeting at the time said, you talk about so many operators, but you haven't tried Shafiq Travels, and he's just come back. Maybe before you make a decision, first go to him. The Shafiq Karakham, he made us feel, feel so comfortable. I never met the man in my Thai life, but this man felt like I know him forever. We got off at the right footing. He said, what will you love? What will you love? Frau Mensa, do you love? Pistak, and it's like pistak, Frau Mensa, you know. We had a richtig geklaas to maal om dit te doen. And then he came uh, down with the, pack, the package and he read everything for us. And I oh, looked at Sumaya and I looked at Fatima. I said to them, Dasha Fik, this is exactly what we want. I'm not going anywhere else. Done looking? I'm booking, we're booking with you. Sumaya, how do you feel about it? Fat no, we're booking. But Dasha Fik passed away two months after that, no? And we Totally, totally, totally saddened. Yes. Not knowing what is going to happen now. It was very sad for us. But I had a plan with Rida. Even though Rida was still very young, we had to leave on the Sunday with a group of people that his daddy now was going to take. When he came back after two weeks, I think we gave him a couple of weeks to rest and then we, went, we had a meeting with him and he had his uncle with Abu Tanadim. He said, just like that, whatever my daddy gave you, uh, um, uh, um, offered you, I accept. Oh. I will honor it and I will take you until Rashida. You don't have emotional. Ya yeah, Allah. Because a lot of people said, they had to do me, you won't be able to do it. But I had this feeling in my heart that day on that train, Allah guided my heart. If you can do this, Rashida, you can do anything. And that is where I got my spirit from. That is what I held on to. Even if I don't get anybody to assist me and to help me with this, I will be able to do it. We toured Cairo. We toured Jerusalem. We toured uh, um, Amman. We did Petra. We did uh, uh, um, Makkah Medina. And it was a great success. Alhamdulillah.
I didn't even know that you're in trouble because I didn't know. And the dog comes out and he says, Adi Rashida, let me see your passports. 13 our passports has been stamped with the yeah. Jerusalem uh, um, um, stamp. You still have to go to Baka. Generally, Generally that time, that time they, they're supposed to stamp a piece yeah, of paper. Israeli, stamping a passport you can't enter Saudi Arabia. They won't allow you to enter Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. what happened is Rida was trying now to, to get us, our passports, to be cleaned. How we did it, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided him I and Allah uh, sh uh, showed you know him that you know they didn't even look at our passports. Because there was one old lady, she was she was 90, she was now I said, recite the following uh, um, ayah in the Quran of Surah Yasin. And, and I wrote it on a piece of paper for yeah. everybody yeah. and everybody yeah. is reciting yeah. this yeah. as we drive, you know, to the border and we got... Wallahi, that, that, that Arabs, they didn't even look at our passports. We just went through. When we came to the other side, so Zumaya said, do you know that that was actually the border that we were supposed to be sent turned back? She said, Alhamdulillah, was this here? Was it no Makatu? Was it no Madina? Jerusalem was the highlight, the fact that we could actually go in, into to, to Majul Aqsa, you know, even though there was, at that, there's always been, um, trouble but we could actually freely go in sit in the haram and you know make our five walks in, in the tunnels and underground and we had a complete tour of the aqsa and the, the villages we even met with a family that was from the old time they even ikaramed us to come and have tea with them i think the great great grandmother still alive very old very frail but she could speak to us but then they translated what she said we must invite the people to come to Jerusalem. She said, don't ever keep the people away to come and visit us. So, and I'm currently working for Shafiq Travel. So in conjunction with working for Shafiq Travel, I'm also helping um, Rashida with the organization. If the trip is on a Sunday, we would go through with my car. We would get to Hadini. The bus would drop the people and then Rashida and I would take the people's luggage into my car drive him to the chalet and back. If it's on a Sunday, I would sleep over the Sunday evening, leave the next morning, Monday morning, or whatever morning, go straight to work like nothing happened. And she told us, what did you do? And she said, I 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 said, With the second Umrah, we had um, one of my, uh, uh, it was a family friend. She so much wanted to go to do AXA, but she had a, um, a lung problem and she was on a ventilator 24 seven. But Alhamdulillah, she was so strong that she said for the duration of the flight, she won't need it. But her husband was a, a anchor. He really supported her. He was really there for her. Alhamdulillah, she said to me when we came back, she said, Rashida, Allah is for my fakhan, but it's for lang it for was aksa. In 2010 trip, we had Auntie Asi, and she was in a wheelchair, and obviously I had my son with me. So his job was to take Auntie Asi Fajr time to the, to the Haram, and it was my job to take a maghrib between maghrib and Isha. So in the morning, now I'm stressing, I said, Muhammad Sabri, did you take Auntie Asi? Mommy, I took her, I left her outside. Now, and now I'm stressing because now Auntie Asi didn't go inside the house. Then I come to Auntie Asi, Auntie Asi, did you come to Sabri? Allah, you can't even look at the baby cub. Then I'm stressing the whole day because Muhammad Sabri would pull my leg. So Alhamdulillah, even though he went with me, he was actually a great help. That time the wheelchair just came in where you can hire 50 real and you can sign your own. The electric wheelchairs. Before we know it, thank you, Auntie Ajira. Then Muhammad Sabri said, Mommy, do you think my auntie is bashing while she's the, um, doing? Then again, afterwards, Auntie Khadija got the wheelchair. So now I'm in charge of Auntie Khadija. Auntie Khadija drove over my feet.
understand my children when you're in difficulty you know people make to offer you and that to us is what what take you through any carries you through any situation so anti Khadija for me was a pleasure and the Khadija to be able to come we had to push on a wheelchair all the time she got onto the airport and she walked to her family remember she yeah she ran to her family and I thought what anti Khadija no I'm like crack a cry but alhamdulillah from say when I started out, it was 20, 30 people. It actually grew to 1,620 people at the time. So we were supposed to have two trips for this year, but because of the COVID situation, I had to cancel it. So inshallah, next year we will have our trip again. This year we also planned a Turkey tour, which we were going to cover seven cities in Turkey. That is on hold. So inshallah, as soon as the, the, the no, I think the, the flights and the COVID is now subsided, Inshallah, we will continue with the Turkey tour and see how grateful they are for the service. It is not about uh, um, just dropping them off and leaving them to their own accord now. If there is anything wrong, I personally see that it's my duty to take care of them. You know, if there's maybe something wrong with the, the stove or the fridge is not working or this is not working, Whoever wants to join the organization, there's no fees involved. The only thing that they have to do, they have to pay for the package. Furthermore, if we do an international tour, we don't even charge, ask them for money to pay for the tour guide. We as an organization try to get funds in to cover that. Because we want to give them a package and say, okay, you pay 20,000 rand. Halas. You don't pay more, you don't pay. Sense. If you out of your own want to give, you can give, but we're not going to ask you. That's the only time we have a fundraiser, when we do an international tour and we want to take that money so that we can spend it on them again. So basically when we come back, the, the, the feeling that you get, the satisfaction that you get out of doing it because some say, yeah, Allah can not make it Then I will organize a bus, then I will take them to the beach. We now sometimes go to um to um Seaforth or we will, I will take them to um St. James. Then we just picnic there for the day. You, you can't please everybody. You're always going to have complaints. You're always going to have somebody that you doesn't like somebody else or whatever. There was times that I had to give up my bed to sleep on the floor to accommodate somebody else in, in my room because the in it. But I did it. For the love of it, I slap on my own. I slap on my own. You know, as long as you're happy, oh, then I, and I tell people, if I get on the bus, I said, if you're not happy in your room, please tell me. I don't mind changing you. I don't mind sleeping on the floor. I'll go sleep on the floor. I want you to be happy. Enjoy. You can't go on a holiday and be unhappy. And I will not falter on that. There are um, a, a, a few young people that also join us because it doesn't matter if you're, under, you're not a senior, but you be part of the Rainbow Nation. It's about uh, um, also encouraging the younger to see what the old is doing. So inshallah, Allah might give them the hidayah to see, okay, you know, Auntie Rashid, Auntie Tzumaya, I've been doing this. You know? We as a couple, can we also do this? Maybe for our family. You know, it's about, uh, um, almost like we, we are the mirror for the world. But as long as I am alive, I will do what I love doing, and this is to serve humanity in my own way. I might not be giving them money. I might not be giving them luxuries. But I give them the opportunity to see the world through their own eyes, not somebody else's eyes, if Allah grants them the opportunity. I always heard about the Mrs. Minton, I never knew who she was. With my groceries in my hand, and I put it down, and, and she asked me, who are you? And I said, I'm coming for the, for the open day, and I'm just coming to find out about the social work journey. Of course, she said, it's your car. She said, no, I don't have a car. She said, no, where you come? I said, I came with... Um, uh, uh, I came from Salt River, but I took a taxi. She said, now, where do you stay? I stay, I stay, I stay in Grossi Park. No, where do you stay? When I took a lift, I said, well, I took a lift. She asked me. <laughs> we only met for the first time, eh? And this is the conversation that we, the two of us have. She said, stay for me. I said, what? I go to my office, I go to my office, what for us do we live? Can I? Jay sook so long, for us to live. And I said, okay, it's fine. It can work for me. I said to her. And as... The, the people came in for the for the open day and that, and this girl comes in, Fatima, and um, she greets me, says salam, and we started talking. And I said to her, um, how, where do you stay? She said, no, she stays in the retreat. 
I just said, where is it? I said, I stay in Plantation Road. I said, oh, by the way, um, did you come with your car? She said, no, my husband dropped me. I said, oh, no, because me and Mrs. Mindel is looking for a lift. She said, no problem, my husband can drop you. I'm sure he, uh, you won't have a problem. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She phoned her husband. Her husband said, no, it's fine. I ran into Mrs. Mindel's office. I said, we got a lift. She said, yes, it's some quite cool. So my let's do. He said, you know the person? I said, no, just met her now like you met me and I met you. We had just met her and we got to live. And that is the road that me and Mrs. Minton walked. She always used to say that I am a, a Malaika. Wherever we go, she said, this is my Malaika. We got lost so many times. Then we eventually, we don't know how we find the place. But we find the place. We find the place. We said, you know, it's a Malaika. Jay, we live a Malaika. She was nominated for Women of Worth. And, and, and she was really my inspiration, I would say. She really threw me in the deep end. I can I swim at the swim. And I want to also show my gratitude and, and thank her for steering me and making me the person that I am today. A strong woman. I can I can stand for for what I believe in and for her encouragement. That's why I say, if I can manage 30 senior people, I can manage my 12 grandchildren. Yeah. We as a family go out together, me and my sons and all my grandchildren. We go on a, like a weekend away, spend quality time together. Yeah. From a year old, and my eldest granddaughter is 22. But they can visit me, but they can't sleep by me too much. Uh-uh, no, uh -uh, mommy, my, my heart needs a rest. They already know, my daughter-in-law say already, yeah, mommy say, mommy gonna look after the girls, but not the boys, because I think I've got, I've got more girls than boys' grandchildren. But I would rather look after the girls, but the, not the boys. Um, I have four grandchildren. The eldest is 13 years old, and the youngest is two. Um, it loves them to bits, but babysitting is not my forte. So I would tell my children, I don't mind um, looking after the children, but in with your last to call with you. <laughs> you first had to ask everybody else. So if you come to me, I would, I, I would be your last option. 99.9% .9 of the time, I would say yes. Every second Sunday, we would take the, two, uh, the grandchildren. To be honest, I won't be able to do it without my husband, so... So, alhamdulillah, and my eldest granddaughter, I can only take her when I have money because she's 13 and if I take her anywhere, then it's more buy me this, more can you buy me that. And I said to her, she was by me on Saturday, I said, Imran, I can't take you now because I'm not working. So what I do is I make them their favorite dishes just to steal their hearts. I've, we've got the loyal supporters, we've got people that that maybe they don't come this year, but then they will join next year. But then we also got the newcomers that come on board, you know. And once, I think once you've got the taste of the Rainbow Senior Citizens Foundation, you just want to stick with them. I want to say shukran for them, for their loyal support, for always being there, and for basically carrying us. We give them at least a year or two to, to pay off a package. I mean, some of their children, they do help which we're very grateful for also, you know, especially when it comes to the international tours, you know, because that can become a little bit costly. We, we, we thank them and we are very grateful, you know, for them supporting their parents. The travels to me is the most rewarding feeling I can have. But my passion was always to help people, to help them, the, the, the group leaders and Two of my um, travels was my, with my friend Auntie Mariam. I said Auntie Mariam, I can Umara. And she just came back from her. She says to me, I can with you. She's Afrikaans speaking because she's from Namibia. So I said, Auntie Mariam, you're sure you're gonna go with me because you just me, 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 I can with you. Okay, so with the case, so when I when I um I met this lady, um Faiza Albertain, and she said to me, Sumaya. You have the ability to come and help me. It took me a year to decide. So currently I'm on the subcommittee for the um, cancer relay finance. So we have once a year, we were, we have a, um, a fundraising at um, Faithy's Crown. If you want to succeed in life, 
you must persevere. Don't ever give up on your dream. If you fail, get up. You're going to be stronger. Through failure, you can only learn by your mistakes. And if it's not meant to be, then keep it away from us. But if it's meant to be, then let it be a success. To, to start anything in life, you must have the right intention. I think anything that you put your mind to, or your mindset to, will be a success. Nothing comes easy. It's hard work. And if you're positive at all times, then I'm sure whoever wants to do anything in life will be successful, inshallah. The sky limit. May Allah Ta'ala grant you success, inshallah. Like my sound. Huh? My sound. Yeah, also see so clued up. I only really use this for my games. <laughs> She's the one that does everything. It's the runner one. Maybe I should be out of this. No. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Who can try out of the on? Oh, there's so many. Okay. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, what? Yeah, <laughs> Do we have a Facebook page? Yeah. Must I take my glasses off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Constantia. I think so. <laughs> um, my sister's friend. No, Yasmina. Sorry. No, you were first my friend. Oh, was I first your friend? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, and the door's making fun. Rashida, you're not going to Maka. You're going to go. You're going to go. The next thing she saw me riding, chasing him. So she asked me afterwards, what did you do for you? I said to Maria, I don't want to do it. Mrs. Mantel always used to say to me, she was a fan of her. She had a bitch. Was it with the first woman or the second woman they left me on the airport? And every time I said, you don't want to do it. The people make my mouth, they make me sick, they make me sick. Now for what are you screaming? I said, I'm not shouting. I'm excited. She came to my. She came to find out who is this mad woman that's bringing women, people from 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 Cape Town to to to, to Maka. She said, "Take them to Maka, sir." I said, "I love what I'm doing." So she said, "But can you come and hold that club?" You know. I tell them Fajr one morning. I said, "I'm going to climb a Jabal Nur. I'm not waking up for Tajud, not for Fajr." I come back. Hello, from me. Where was she for it? Was it Amal for Salah? No man, it's Maka Gaskrati. People would come to fish me out of the bed at twelve o'clock at night. So my dad Umrah, we had to go for shopping. But as if I could only go, go to the market and look at the new holiday, not for myself to recover from that on the new holiday. So I come now for only say Rashida, can you also get now dump too? Yeah, I pack my bag because I'm a young because I'm very dumb. Then I would say now sit opposite me, then you just show to me, you know, I must that with my voice or must you know. And when you undercoat and you want to go with, I come and make a plan. So I can sum.